there and go through ACC records. I think that's what we're doing. Tom. That's correct. Yeah. It's a loaded rundown today. We've got a great show for you. <laughs> you're supposed to, you're going to do the host thing, huh? Yeah. Great show lined up for you, everybody. Make sure. Yeah, go ahead. Let's do what's on the ledger. I know Adrian Crawford's going to join us this hour so that we have an opportunity to look at the revamped uh, basketball roster. It's June, and there's not a lot of FSU-related content right now. Uh, so that's th a perfect opportunity to kind of get caught up with Adrian. I always like talking to him anyhow, and his insight is always greatly appreciated. He's going to join us at 1.30, and we'll go kind of talk about this roster. Ham's, Ham's in a good mood, man. I've, I've seen him twice now in the last few days. Again, I've mentioned on the show that my son's at the basketball camp, which concluded today. And um, I think he feels like they've had a good offseason, and that was seriously in question, you know, obviously. So all of a sudden you look at this roster and you kind of, all right, I can see where this might work. This might be all right. This is They're going to be better than they were a year ago. It looks like that. So yesterday there was a tweet, and if you go to at FSU Hoops right now, you'll see what I'm talking about. There's a graphic, and it shows a picture of Leonard with a, a quote, a block quote next to him. It's got a black background and white font. Mm. And I'm scrolling through, and I see it, and I go, what the hell? Is he retiring? What's going on here? Because oh, it, it, it looks like an announcement of serious nature. And what it actually is is Leonard saying that this group is, is – um, exuding the seminal spirit the unconquered spirit oh i see what you're talking and about. they're you... pushing about uh buying tickets for next year so it's actually a pitch for season tickets but if you just look at that graphic as you're scrolling you go oh bleep what's going on you got nervous doesn't that look like something that i mean that looks serious we're having to live at a time by the way this is a this is kind of a spin-off topic but it is true and i thought about it a lot this week because of the conversation centered around fsu baseball and one of the things that kind of came up was, you know, what, what are they going to do, right? Like a lot of the people on the chat, a lot of people online, a lot of people uh, on the message boards on warchant.com, uh, people in my email inbox, you name it. All, you know, everybody's got an opinion about what that baseball season represented, what should happen to Mike Martin Jr. Should he be back? Should he be retained? Should he be fired? Uh, do they need to make changes on the coaching staff? Which kids are staying? Which kids are going? Transfer portal stuff, right? So you that – no matter where you stand on that, this isn't me giving an opinion on that right now. I've talked about it before, but that's out there, right? So you have a coach, no matter what, let's just say he's retained. You have a coach that at the very least enters next season firmly on the hot seat, okay? And then you consider, which is the omnipresent elephant in the room, and that is the importance of this upcoming season for football. And how many times have we talked about this? I mean, it's it's a daily, at least in passing at some point, it's a daily reference that this season is of vital importance to Florida State. And so, and to Mike Norvell and his staff moving forward, whether that means he's going to be fired if they have a, a bad season and don't win seven, eight games like we speculate, uh, or or that he's just set up to be a dead man walking. I kept using the phrase dead man walking. I said that he wouldn't get fired this year, but that, look, bottom line is it wouldn't really matter. He would, in essence, have been fired if he has a terrible season this year because he won't be able to recruit. Won't be able to recruit. Recruiting's already going, eh, average, so it'd be a problem, okay? So then that that's two, right? That that's That's two coaches that you're talking about, hot seat and or – going to be dismissed and or not real sure about the uh, the future for, for their employment here at Florida State. And then there's what you just brought up with Leonard Hamilton. And almost by definition, you know, we're at the end of his career, right? Because he's going to be 74 before the season starts. And even though he looks 40 and he's still viable and he's been great for us and we love it and we love him. The reality is the future is most of what we look ahead to is a time that's not going to feature Leonard Hamilton as the head coach at Florida State. Like he's he's a short timer. I mean, I don't assume Leonard Hamilton is going to be coaching until he's 85, nor should he. And I also don't think that that's look, I don't know what he's got left. What, two years, three years, maybe? I don't, I don't know. So but again, by definition, he's at the end of his career. So if you think about the big three. We, we are in an interesting time. Now, you marry that with what we've brought up regarding the, the this transition from the way things used to be done with the boosters to the way things are done now with the autonomy given an actual athletic director that, to me, 
I would say it, it's akin to, and for the first time since, what Dave Hart had, right? So since Dave Hart, we've had puppets for athletic directors. That's not a knock on who they are. It's just the reality of their situation. They didn't have any real authority, okay? Now you have an athletic director who's not only got real authority, but he's going to have to do it because your president is not actively involved in athletics the way previous presidents have been. He's Which, not. Here, here. Yeah, All right. Agreed. But the point is he's going to rely on the athletic director that he hired and some other very important people who have sway, especially depending on the amount of money they write in checks and that kind of thing for the university. But you, you get it. And the very separate, not intertwined at all, NIL collective. <laughs> Completely different. <laughs> they just, they're not even FSU fans. They just chose Florida State and Tallahassee to be the collective area. So, and those people too. Right. So, in no way, shape, or form, but yes. Yes. So, the point would be that athletic director, Mike Alford, I ask you this question Would this be the most exciting time of your life or the most stressful or both? Or how would you see it? Because you you have asked for this. This is what you wanted to ascend to. You're an athletic director. Now, he's been an athletic director before, but this is a real university. He's an athletic director in charge of big boy stuff with at a big boy institution and is in the middle of, uh, or, or it's reached a fork in the road at the very least, right? At the same time that the sport that brings in the most money has reached a fork in, in the, the road. road. So here you are. Every day you walk into that office, you got a lot to do. You got a lot to think about. You got a lot to think about right here, right now, and the future. And, man, you got to vet that on a daily basis. You got to – I'm sure you're in contact, constant contact, uh, with people that you trust implicitly who have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt – that their opinion is worth uh, gauging. You know, you, you've got anybody who does their job really well, certainly understands and reflects upon and does self scouting to know enough to know where their weaknesses are and surrounds themselves with people who are excellent in those areas so that, you know, you can go to them for advice. And, and so th these conversations have to be, uh, I would think uh, daily. Uh, about about navigating these waters because you potentially could have to make three head coaching hires in the next four or five years oh yeah that's the way it's going to trend i mean you've already had to make a couple of big ones for athletic programs that have done some things around here well one was made for you yeah yeah one uh, was made for you and then the other one was uh obviously uh kind of a no-brainer with lonnie yeah. Oh, well, I'm, I'm also talking about women's basketball, too. He's had to make that change as well with Brooke taking over the reins to that program. I'm just saying, you know, yeah, it's a decision. they say yeah, yeah. in they say in a, a presidential term that the first 100 days or first 120 days are critical. Like for Mike, I think Michael, excuse me, because Norvell is yeah. Mike and Michael is the athletic director. The first 500 days, about a year and a half. Yeah. I mean, my goodness. Because this academic calendar year that's upcoming, 22-23, to your point, you've got the big three. You've also got a little bit of pressure, not nearly as much, but still a little pressure to prove that you chose the right person to be the head coach of the FSU soccer program. Now, they've got a lot of returning players, and, and they've got a chance there. But everywhere you look, the football-only facility, fundraising for that, fundraising against NIL collectives, making sure that boosters and, and uh, funds for buildings are still a priority in the grand scheme of things so you can break ground and progress in all the areas that you want to progress, there's not an idle minute, I don't think. This is not an eight-hour-a-day uh, job. This is probably 12 hours a day, mostly every day, and maybe it settles down in a year or two, but maybe it doesn't because the college football landscape is well, changing so quickly. Yeah, that part of it's hard for all athletic directors, uh, and, and it is, it's is—it's interesting time for all of them, but I, I tell you what, man, just thinking about you work, you work to put yourself in a position to get the job that he got. You work hard to do that. And he's been all over the place, right? Just to work to that place. And all roads have led him to this moment, to here. And not all jobs and all situations are created equal. I mean, you may say athletic director, but it's a very different role in some places than others. And your responsibilities in the given moment may change. But man, at this place right now, if you like the action, you got the action. I mean, you here we go. Every day, you've got to be thinking, because you got to be prepared for these moments. Hey, Leonard could walk in tomorrow. I don't think he's going to, but Leonard could walk in tomorrow at 74 years old and say, I think I'm done. 
I think I'm done. Uh, I'm ready to settle down. You know, I, I had the Achilles injury. Then I had the hip surgery. I feel a little beat up, a little weary. I've worked hard. I think I'd like to enjoy this time with my wife and my family and spend the next 20 years, whatever it's going to be, um, traveling or whatever. He, he could. He could very easily do that, right? And you better have a plan in place. You better have a transition plan in place. You better have names that you're turning to. You're prepared for that moment. If Mike Norvell goes three and nine this year, uh, which God forbid, you've got to decide how you're going to handle that. What are we doing? What, what am I doing for fundraising? What am I doing? Am I firing him before I want to? What am I doing? Right. And then the other side of this, I was talking to Ira today and it was brought up on wake up, which is, well, what if he goes nine and three? Because yeah. now you've got to negotiate a raise no. <laughs> because he's gone from three wins to five wins to nine wins. And you've got to negotiate that. So something's happening. I think with Mike Norvell, that's, that's relatively serious for the athletic director to be in the middle of one way or the other oh, this yeah, December. Constantly. And you've got to be ready for all of that. You've talked about it before where as a head coach or an athletic director, you have to have a drawer. And in that drawer is a list of names, a list of names. And you're constantly updating it because those people reveal more of themselves, good or bad every day. They're here. We all do. Now, you know, you find out, Oh, well, the coach that I, Really thought I'd lean on if something like this went down. He's had back to back terrible years. It's not, a, he's not a viable name right now. I couldn't bring him in even if I wanted to, no matter what I think of him. And then there's another guy you maybe never would have thought of, and he's on the rise. He's all the rage. And you could maybe have access to him. You're like, okay, is he's a guy. So you're just, you're constantly moving and shaking with this stuff. And, and right now at Florida State, it's an interesting, fascinating time. Well, and also you got to make sure that every chair is pushed in. Because if it's not pushed in in the athletic offices, then somebody's not doing their job. Make sure hey, it, it might not be your job description, but you better push that chair in. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got to lord and micromanage over everybody that's underneath you. But I, I think to answer my own uh, question, I, I guess it's rhetorical in a way, I, I, I would tell you that if you've wanted to be an athletic director, then you've got to love this. I mean, you have to love it. You better. I mean, this is a lot of fun. There's a lot to do. There's a lot of stuff going on here, man. And it's all of vital importance to a passionate fan base and obviously a storied athletic department. You cannot screw this up. I mean, this is what's going to determine whether or not you're the longtime athletic director, right? So, it, you know, that part is fascinating. And I also wonder, and I've wondered this from the get-go, because we, we do this – when we see changes uh, in other athletic departments, when we see an athletic director come in and take over uh, a new job and he comes in, let's say to Miami, like, like it just happened uh, or somebody comes to uh, take over at Florida and uh, Foley's gone and you're, you know, and you're just, you're thinking to yourself, uh, all that stuff, right? Well, well, how does that impact them? What are they going to do? One thing that we always bring up is that if there are coaches in place who, the fan base is unsure of for one reason or another, right? They just don't feel they don't hate them, but they don't love them. If they weren't chosen by that new athletic director, they're inclined to lean towards making a change typically because it's not their guy. And you're being saddled with somebody you weren't part of the hiring process to vet. So you, you now you're kind of, you know, a lot of times you see athletic directors like, eh, doing an okay job. But, eh. You know, don't let him screw up because it's not my guy, right? I mean, they, they don't say that publicly, but behind the scenes, that is a common theme. And I don't know because I've not talked to him specifically about this, um, but he's worked side by side because he was here uh, with Norvell, and I think they have a good relationship. But I, I wonder if in his mind it's like, well, he wouldn't have been my guy. You know, I mean, all this all this factors into the way we view well, yeah. whatever result we get this year. Yeah. And it also factors into 50 50, which way do you push? Because there are going to be situations as an athletic director, any manager, any manager will deal with 50 50 or close enough situations where you have every right to move on or you have every right to double down and bet on the person that is in trouble in the moment. And so what you're talking yeah, about is yeah. if he has those private thoughts where, I don't know, that I would have gone in this direction, well, that might push 50-50 the other way and say it's time to make a change. Yeah, yeah of course. But maybe he loved him. Who oh, knows? He, he, absolutely. I don't know the answer to that. That's why I made sure I prefaced beforehand, like, hey, 
I don't know how he feels about about him or not. He's certainly not going to say anything publicly that's going to let you know other than I back my guy. I mean, you, you have to say that publicly. Um, and and maybe and, and maybe he does. And I hope, you know, listen, we want everybody pulling in the same direction right now. I mean, the only way anything is going to get done or, or, or that Florida State's going to overcome and get to where they want to be, you, you do need everybody on the same page here. Um, so let's hope that's in place as we start this season, obviously. And, and what can be remedied, what can be solved for, what can be answered for, it's all right here. It's, it's contained. Now go have the season, and the season will tell us the rest. Right, and you're in a position this year where, and the next year after that, you're not really empire building per se. You're trying to put yourself in a position so you can build an empire. But right mm. now, it's just you're trying yeah. to survive more yeah. than thrive. We talked about that in our own circles in our own careers is are, are we in survival mode or are we trying to thrive which one is it and i think right now for this athletic department the right idea is how do we survive border on thrive and then once there's a reorganization of the sport because it feels like it's so close in the grand scheme of like a college football history book it feels like it's on the next page mm. you turn that page and there's going to be a big change how can we get there or be ready for Position when that yourself comes in, to be in a to good thrive, spot yeah, to thrive again to absolutely thrive again yeah well I know one way, and it doesn't take a minute to figure this out. Uh, you can start by winning some games. You, you don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to think too long and hard about what needs to be done in the immediate to change your fortunes for the better and to put yourself in a position to thrive, as you just noted. If things do change radically, uh, yeah, winning seems to solve for all of those things, generally speaking. So, stop having sub five hundred seasons would be the immediate answer. Can we stop? finishing seasons in which we have more losses than wins and we're at home watching those that go to bowls because they won enough games to do so do you think he took an overhead and, and brought mike in on the old school overhead <laughs> and broke that down <laughs> in a chart yeah. so for example yeah. if i had a w column and an l column yeah. and let's put five hash marks here in the w column yeah. and seven, seven over here, here. That's not what we're looking for. Which see? which side that has ratio isn't going to get it done. Which side has more? And Mike's <laughs> the only person in the room. <laughs> Mike. Mike. <laughs> right, right. Right. The L column the L. has. You more. know what L stands for? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. You got it, Mike. Good job. Loss of revenue as well. Mm. A lot of losing. A lot of losing. Jobs. You name it. Now, if we took that chart and moved a couple of these hash marks over to the W column, it changes your uh, outlook completely. You know, you wouldn't believe how much it changes the outlook of things moving forward. It's a, it's unreal. Therefore, the solution is W <laughs> is greater than L <laughs> equals dollar signs. Yeah, there it is. That's there. I'm glad we had this talk before the upcoming season. There it is. You want me to take a picture of this so you can have it with you at all times? You go ahead and take that. You know, you look at, like, I like to get up in the morning. Let's say I'm on vacation or God forbid I'm on a business trip away from home. Like in July, we'll go to Charlotte, you and me. That's right. And the War Chant crew. Radio Row. Here we go. Anyhow, we'll do all of those things. But, you know, if I've been gone for a few days and I miss my kids, I like to start the day. I'll look at my kids. I'll look at it. I, I've got certain photos with the family that just make me smile every time I see them. Could be a birthday moment for my son or something. Like, and I'll look at it and I'll smile. Mike, why don't you keep this little chart that we just did here together? And if you need motivation. You, you look at that and think about this very productive talk we had. In fact, I didn't write it with a, an erasable marker. This is permanent. This is a Sharpie <laughs> I wrote it with. So here is here it is. Just uh, hold on to this transparent sheet. So Florida State had, like, the vast majority of their roster leave for a variety of reasons in uh, basketball. Eight of the 13 players, in fact. That's a lot. That's a, that's a massive overhaul, right? of uh it's a mass exodus uh and so you may be saying to yourself well who the hell who's back well you know caleb mills is back in cleveland and warley and mcleod and fletcher but then there's a whole bunch of names you don't know about and you haven't had a chance to talk about or what does what does that roster breakdown look like well adrian crawford former Seminole great himself will join us in mere moments and we will talk to him about this and get his thoughts on the incoming transfers, the incoming freshmen, of which there are six, the, those guys that have left. Unfortunately, uh, Malik Osborne is one of those guys. I was hoping he'd come back. John Butler, we know, kept his name in the NBA draft, all that stuff. It's Jeff Cabot Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV.
Well, well, well. Hey, Jeff, look at this place. Yeah, My yeah. Goodness. Well, doing well. It's been a while since I've seen you, brother. But, uh, you know, it hasn't been a while since I've been over to Gordo's. I go there on the regular because of you, Eddie. Well, we keep you regular. Well, that's true. But I think of Gordo's as a place to sit down, have a cold beer, talk to your friends, enjoy the sports, eat the delicious food. But I think of you as Uncle Eddie, a man who takes care of his people and takes care of the town. I appreciate that, Jeff. Hey, and we'll keep you regular. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. This is Patty Wilson. Oh, I'm sorry. We're ready. <laughs> He's recording. I, why are you always saying your last name? I it's don't, Patty and Scott. Everybody I knows know that. Patty and Scott. I don't know. This is Patty Wilson. Not this is. I am Patty Wilson. <laughs> what is the idea behind said promo? It's for Patty's Playhouse. We're on Patty's Playhouse Saturdays at 11. Tune in. That's stupid. Just tune in. Saturdays at 11. Patty Wilson, Patty's Playhouse. House talk with a happy ending. Each and every time. <laughs> you were always more than my mom. You were my role model. My best friend and biggest supporter. You filled my days with unconditional love. And you also prepared for the day when you couldn't be here. Because of the woman you were back then, I'm able to be the woman I am now. Your planning made this moment possible. Set your family up for life. Southern Farm Bureau Life Insurance. Your friends for life. This is Andy Cohen. When I was a law enforcement officer, I devoted my life to a career of service and protection. Who's protecting you? Give me a call. 850-671-FARM. That's 671-FARM. Helping you is what we do best. Southern Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company, Jackson, Mississippi. Not licensed to do business in all 50 states. Matt, when you think of a successful Southern cookout, what do you think of first? The food, of course. The food. But you got to think about the food prep. And Hearth and Patio has thought about that with their awesome grills. What kind of grills? Fire Magic, Broil Master, Blaze Grills, Kamado Joe. Matt, they got it all. Wow. Custom outdoor kitchens create an outdoor cooking space. You'll be the envy of your neighborhood. You will be the envy of your neighborhood, and you'll make a lot of people jealous. That's because you called Hearth and Patio at 850-727-4282. That's 850-727-4282. Or you can visit Hearth and Patio online at hearthpatiotallahassee.com. <laughs> it's a backyard barbecue party. <laughs> Leslie Holcomb's the number one more time. 850-727-4282. That's 850-727-4282. The Hearth and Patio, they not only keep the home fires burning, Hearth and Patio will elevate your grilling game. Nice. Nice indeed. Wit & Glass has been taking care of families since 1945. Experienced, reliable professionals who offer only the best, like Widden's top-of-the-line bath enclosures. Eye-catching storefronts are a specialty at Widden Glass, and they provide precise installation. Widden Glass, Tallahassee's first family in glass. Online at WiddenGlass.com. Call 850-222-5781. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. F. Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. Clean insight from my man, Adrian Crawford, former Seminole great. You hear his stylings oftentimes as he breaks it down uh, for you as a color analyst. And um, he's going to join us right now because there's been a massive overhaul with this Florida State roster. There he is. I can see him. That's good stuff. Hey, Adrian, how are you, brother? Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you, buddy? 
I'm doing great. I'm doing great. All right, let's talk about the team. Let's talk about four. Let's just dive right in. It's it, Listen, have you had a chance to kind of really wrap your mind around eight players leaving from this basketball team out of the 13? That's like that. that you never see that. And I guess I'll preface it and say this. You also never see eight guys leave and then turn around and assess what's coming in and think, I think we're going to be better off. And I don't mean that as a slight to everybody. You know what I mean? Like when you see that kind of change normally, you're you're pretty worried. But I, I think there's reason to be excited. Yeah, no, um, I, I'm with you, Jeff. I think that, um, you know, normally when this happens, because we have a different landscape, I think that what we can't do, and you know this, I mean, you talk about all the different landscapes of sports, is that we're no longer playing against to the, the, the current rules and we can't evaluate based off of kind of, Jeff, even the world we grew up in and what mm -hmm. we you know, over 20 some odd years, you being in this game and, you know, and evaluating, you know, uh, sports across every spectrum. You look at it right now, look at golf. You know what I mean? We got we got dudes leaving the PGA, you know, to go over there. And, and, and you know, so I think it's different. But yes, to answer your question very specifically, I think this team is going to be better. I mean, there's no way around it. Like you said, it's no slight toward the guys who left. But here's the truth about it. Uh, like my father used to always say, if my exes are more talented and more athletic than your O's, I'm going to win nine out of ten times. And the truth be told, like you bring a lot of talent in with, this, with these eight guys. So let's start with the big name that I think got everybody excited this week when we saw it happen. And, and, and all of a sudden, everybody went, oh, man. So who's this guy? And, and why am I supposed to be excited about a guy named Baba and, and, and all that? What do you know of Baba Miller? What have you seen and what can you tell us about what, what you think he'll be at this level? Yeah, Baba Miller, I've got a chance to watch, you know, honestly, I got a chance to watch some decent amount of film on him. And, and here's who he is. I mean, it's kind of comparing to somebody. I'm not saying he's going to be at this level, um, but I mean, he is Jonathan Isaac in a sense. Maybe not Jonathan Isaac defensively, but he's farther along offensively than Jonathan Isaac was. I mean, he's six. I mean, he came here when they on his visit. They measured him. He's six eleven. He's got a seven two seven three wingspan. I mean, literally, he is a prototypical today's four man. Can shoot it from three. He's athletic. I mean, he can pass the ball. I mean, he's a European kid. And so, um, and and I think he is going to be. I mean, he is a huge get. Uh, for Florida State. I mean, he is one of the most talented kids that's put his foot on his campus. Do you think – is he big enough to finish around the rim? Yeah. No, he really is. That was the thing. You know, when you get European kids, you're always worried about, okay, they're still are they athletic. But if you watch a lot of his film, I mean, my man's catching transition – I mean, he's dunking. I mean, I, there's one there's one actual game I was watching. They threw him a lob. My man comes you know, out of nowhere, reverse dunk. And so he plays above the rim. He can run. And you know how that goes. And he was doing that in a European kind of, you know, a little bit more slowdown. You know, here yeah. at Florida State, you know, we're out and we're to the races. So I think he's going to have all the ability to do that and really fit in. Good news there. And I bring him up because he's part of that six of incoming players, uh, freshmen, if you will. Uh, go through and highlight any of these guys. I, we can't go through every player, yeah. but if you want to talk about uh, the Corin kid, the Jackson kid, Green, Bembry, you name it. Name, name the guys you're excited about in that group that's coming in. Yeah, I'm going to first start off with Chandler Jackson. Chandler Jackson is Trent Forrest. Now, when I say that, I mean this. He's a he's a winner like Trent Forrest. Okay. I mean, the kid just wins. And and he's one of those kids, I'll do whatever you need to do to, what you know, how Trent was. I mean, you need a stop, you get your stop. You need a rebound, get your rebound. You need a bucket, go get your bucket. Uh, the kid, I mean, he really processes basketball at a high level. And so I think he's going to help a ton. I actually think as well. You know, um, when you really look at Green coming in, I mean, Green is a more upgraded P.J. Savoy. Um, okay. You get a guy who can shoot the blood out of the basketball, but he's never really played. He's always played like more of in a system. But now in how, you know, Florida State plays and where, again, it's a lot off read and reaction. A lot of that's why these guys are prepared for the NBA. Um, I've been watching him in the practice. They've had him. He's really flourishing. I mean, again, I think as well, you know, when you really look at a, uh, you know, a Jalen Ganey coming in, I mean, you got a kid with experience, defensive player of the year. And that was one of the things, too, last year, you know, Jeff, is like you can press all you want to and pick up and pressure the way we do, but we're really good when we have rim protectors. And I think yeah. he's going to be a rim protector as well. And, and I'm going to go back really quick, and I'm going to say this. A guy who I think, who I, I don't, um, who has probably made in such an incredible improvement, um, to me has been Naheem McLeod. Um, if he stays healthy, I mean, he is going to be an outright force. We got excited about him, and then the injury happened, and we were right. We were robbed. Adrian, we were robbed because you and I, we talked about it. We were excited about what that, where that was going, where that was yes. trending. So I'm yeah. not surprised to hear you say right off the bat, like, hey, 
we got a lot of guys coming in that we're excited about, but there was a guy here who was well on his way, and then the injury happened. So that is exciting. You brought up Jalen Ganey. He's part of the incoming transfer. He, he, yep. he was the Ivy League Defensive Player of the Year. He's a big shot blocker. Uh, there's a rim protector you're talking about. And also, I was excited, and we saw this guy. I want to remind Florida State fans. You know, of course, you were there. Uh, but, but Darren Green Jr. can shoot the lights out. He's played a ton of basketball, the UCF transfer. I mean, you can't really uh, – overstate how important it is to have played a lot of big time college basketball and had success. That's a plug and play guy. That's a guy like with these incoming freshmen and you kind of, well, we'll wait and see. Everybody's a little different. There's a lot to transition. When you got a guy that comes in and he's played as much basketball as, as he has, you know, you can just start him. You can play him right now and he's ready to go. That's it. And I think that, you know, I always try to remind, you know, when I talk to people is that, uh, even though, you know, this team was a man, remember we were the number one team in the ACC. And so I was, you know, say biblical calamity hit this team and everybody gets hurt. Mm -hmm. um, but we got guys who got a lot of minutes. And now when you plug and play from Ganey to green guys with significant minutes, along with the guys who were here last year from Worley um, and Matthew Cleveland, again, ACC six man of the year, um, ton of minutes, you know, McLeod. I mean, you're going to now, and then even, uh, you know, Cam Fletcher and Caleb oh, yeah. Mills. I mean, you've got a lot of guys with a lot of basketball, man. So I 100% agree with you that having these two guys, especially with Green, you got guys with, with minutes, and that is always a big deal uh, playing. And it allows your freshmen to come along. We saw last year, Jeff, that these freshmen got thrown in the fire and, you know, and, and it was hard for them. It was hard to get thrown playing, you know, the way we play, trying to play 30 minutes a game, 35 minutes a game. That's just, it's, it's insane to try to do that and play the way we play. I think you've kind of hit on the answer that you'll, you'll need to maybe give here, but I, I want to ask you, because we have two questions in the chat and they're kind of both centered around defense. Uh, Swiss Irish writes uh, perimeter defense by chance from these newbies, definitely a step back from previous seasons. And he's talking about last year. We didn't, we didn't play well out on the perimeter. You know, this was a, a an outlier watching this Florida State basketball team last year. They didn't defend. They really did not do a great job of defending. And we know that's not part of the culture here. That's not how they teach it. Um, I think you just answered this some, but if you want to add to it, feel free. Basically, they had so many injuries at so many different spots during the course of the year. They had to play guys that weren't ready that weren't ready to play, that, that didn't understand the system, frequently were out of position because of it. I don't want to answer yeah. for you but no. am i you know if you want to take that further go go ahead no you know you're spot on and, and i think too what we have to understand is that if you watch us play we pick up full court yep and then on top of that offensively when we're really clicking you know we're 225 passes you don't get the rest on the offensive end so that's why you always see over time guys can't play you know over 30 minutes, just maybe like a Trent Forrest and Terrence Mann, you know, here and there. But last year, we got Matthew Cleveland and Worley. I haven't played 30 minutes, and you just can't sustain. I think last year, this group, now they have the physical ability to be incredible defensively, but I also think it, it's predicated on a system. And if you don't know where to be, and again, you know this from switches and everything mm -hmm. that's happening. The game is complex. It's not just sometimes we think it's just, oh, man, just keep somebody in front of you. It's like it's not that. It's because you're switching one through five. And then it's got to know, hey, when people are running, they're going to slip. I mean, we started in Miami. Miami started making adjustments in the second half. And when you have freshmen, they start slipping that screen. They can't adjust that fast. They've already seen it this year. So now when a team goes to a slip quick because we switch everything, they're going to know how to adjust already because they literally had to see it over and over again. And so this team will be absolutely better. And here's the other thing. When in doubt, you've got one of the leading shot blockers in the country in Ganey, and then you've got Naheem McLeod behind you who's going to be so much better. So Because let me tell you this, shot blockers cover up a multitude of sin <laughs> on the defensive end of the floor. Yeah, there's no doubt. It's reason to be excited. And and it's weird because it, as we vet it and we talk about it now, while we were going through it, and I say we from afar, mm -hmm. these guys were playing on the court and having to go through it. While, we, while it was happening, it was hard. It was the school of hard yeah. knocks. It, it's tough to watch. It's frustrating to watch. But as you come out the other end and you survive it, and then we add these pieces that we're talking about now, Adrian, you now see what a huge benefit that was to have to have gone through it. Like, it, it's – that, you know, it's the rainbow at the end, right? You kind of, well, that was less than ideal. We didn't have the season we wanted to have. But by the way, these guys have been through it all now. 
Yeah, they have. And and here's what's helping now. You know, these guys are going to be going on that their tour. I think they're going to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think they're heading over. I can't remember exactly. They're going uh, – they're going uh, somewhere in the age. I can't Dubai, remember. Yeah. Yeah. Dubai. It's Dubai. They're going to Dubai. 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 Yeah, yep. yeah. Like, gosh, I couldn't remember. They're going to Dubai. And here's the thing. So now you're getting all these new guys with an opportunity with the other guys to now play games. So they're going to be way ahead. Yeah. You know, practices and things like that. So this group, I mean, they're going to come in, I think, ready to go. And here's the one thing I've been super impressed with. I mean, Matthew Cleveland. Um, you know, six man of the year. And the one thing that we knew with Matthew Cleveland is this. He couldn't, you know, it was, he doesn't shoot the ball. Doesn't shoot the ball. I've, I've watched him. Here's what the kid's doing. Every morning he's in there and I'm talking about 500 shots where, I mean, it is form. It is working on it. Then he's coming back doing it. The kid is a machine at getting better. And I'm watching, I'm watching him practice. He's shooting the ball better. And he, again, he's got several more months before the season starts. And again, I'm not saying we start the year, my man's going to be shooting 50 from the three. But, you know, once you start getting game reps in with the work you've been doing, it starts to hone in. So if he gets to a point where he's just shooting 35 from the three, where he's just a genuine threat with already his ability. I mean, that's why a lot of NBA guys are really, really high on him um, because they see him, you know, in that kind of same vein as some of these guys from Pat Williams to Terrence Mann. Last thing, and I'll let you go. Uh, I've just wondered about this because I valued him so much. And really, we've seen uh, for Florida State, it, it's tough. Guys who do good work and put in the time have opportunities. And yeah. we've seen this assistant coaching staff rated and get these opportunities. And while we celebrate those guys, I mean, we were so happy for Gates. And now see why, right? Um, how do we replace him? How do we replace those guys? Because they weren't just good coaches. They were also coaches that did a great job in recruiting. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, again, you, I mean, again, I say this, I mean, it was bittersweet for me. Uh, CY is my guy, you know, I mean, yeah. he is, he became a really good friend of mine. And so, but I love it for him. Um, I love it. He's out there with Dennis. Dennis is a good friend of mine. Again, he's got, I mean, they got a Florida State gang out there, you know, Michael Fly, who's a Florida Gulf Coast, uh, who got a really raw deal at FGCU winning 22 games and you get fired, which is unheard of. He goes to that. I mean, they got him out there on staff. They got a great group, but I hate to see it for CY. But here, I will say this uh, adding RJ Barsh uh, was a great hire for Coach Ham. Young guy, incredibly energetic. Um, a guy who actually does a good job recruiting as well was uh, was really, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, was out there in um, was at Boise State. And mm -hmm. actually, then they had a really good team last year, and he recruited a lot of those players there. So I think he's going to step in. But here's what I always have to remind people Leonard Hamilton is chief OG, right? Like, I mean, look at it. The dude just signed a top international prospect over Gonzaga, who was in the Final Four. Right. Thinking about mistaken, or yeah, I mean, you know, it's like, like he just like we can never go past the fact of who Ham is, right? Um, and so I think again, there was a hard loss for CY. I mean, we're already seeing it right now. They're already replacing and they're already doing it. So I think they're going to be fine. Um, and I also think that you know, again, there's such a strong culture here at Florida State, and that's what Baba Miller said. I mean, when you talk about it, you look at his guys, like, look, what we have is proof. We have proof now. Scotty Barnes, Patrick Williams, Terrence Mann, Trent Forrest, Fiondu Comingelli, um, Scotty, again, Scotty, rookie of the year. People want to come here now because we develop pros. And not just guys who kind of get to the league, but guys who have sustained ability in the league and who NBA guys love. So that is such a selling point. So I think we'll keep that going. It's so exciting. I, I, it's a great opportunity, and I'm glad you did it, to remind everybody what, what Leonard Hamilton is, man, a legend in the game and beloved in the coaching profession, beloved by players and coaches alike, and, of course, media. Um, yeah, he's he's still – and he's still got that enthusiasm. I just talked to him yesterday. My son's in his camp right now. Hey, it's always a pleasure, Adrian. It's great talking to you, buddy. Thanks for the insight, and uh, we'll talk again real soon. All right, take care, Jeff. All right, you take care. Adrian Crawford does a great job as a color analyst for Florida State basketball. He was a good player here. I've been on the air so long that I covered him when he was – on. I covered him while I was on the air when he was a player here. And that was at the end of the last century. Yeah, his retro yes. season was 97. He played 98 to 2001. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was on the air for all of that. Yeesh. <laughs> Jeff Cameron, show 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chat TV.
Your local news now. The Tallahassee Police Department said Tuesday afternoon it believes the body found inside a home on Wesley Drive is that of Avis Anderson, who has been missing since October of 2020. The department says it is waiting for positive identification and the cause of death following an autopsy from the medical examiner's office. The body was found inside the home which Anderson had owned Friday. Detectives had searched the house multiple times for Anderson when she went missing, but they did not find her. TPD did deploy cadaver dogs in those searches. A junk pro worker found the human remains while cleaning out the home on Friday. Testimony is now underway in the retrial of Preston Hart. Hart is accused of shooting and killing Jason Joseph during an argument on the corner of Indiana and Callaway Streets back on January 13th of 2019. Joseph was found dead outside an apartment nearby and an autopsy confirmed he'd been shot three times. Hart stood trial earlier in 2022, but after more than six hours of deliberation, the jury could not agree on a verdict and the judge declared a mistrial. This is Rachel N.A. with your World Talk 93.3 Local News Update brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tell has his go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Scattered thunderstorms likely this afternoon, otherwise mainly cloudy skies. Highs around 91, west winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Mainly cloudy skies expected tonight. Scattered thunderstorms likely, lows around 73. Scattered thunderstorms likely tomorrow, high of 91, sunshine mixed with clouds at times. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 88. Hi, my name is Shannon Pash, and I'm the principal at Red Hills Academy. We will provide a challenging, rigorous curriculum. We will also work with our students to teach them how to set goals and then how to work to reach those goals. Red Hills Academy will offer the Spanish language every day. Relationships are really important to us, not just with our students, but with our families and the community. This benefits parents and students alike because parents get that involvement within the school. Easily apply online today at redhillsacademy.com. Well, well, well. Hey, Jeff, look at this place. Yeah, My yeah. Goodness. Well, doing well. It's been a while since I've seen you, brother. But, uh, you know, it hasn't been a while since I've been over to Gordo's. I go there on the regular because of you, Eddie. Well, we keep you regular. Well, that's true. But I think of Gordo's as a place to sit down, have a cold beer, talk to your friends, enjoy the sports, eat the delicious food. But I think of you as Uncle Eddie, a man who takes care of his people and takes care of the town. I appreciate that, Jeff. Hey, and we'll keep you regular. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Here's what you missed on the Greg Tish Show. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Pastor Tabner was alone with a female church employee. Oops. She in a towel and he and his boxers. The charismatic 41-year-old Hurley explained the two of them had been making chili and gotten food on the floor. <laughs> With the hot dogs that they're making, we are hoping that the pastor used the right condiments. I think there was at least one hot dog involved. I don't know what you're talking about. We were just making chili dogs. The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. The Jeff Cameron Show is sponsored by the legendary team at Hamilton Home Loans. Great rates, cutting-edge technology, and transparent communication is the recipe for a five-star mortgage experience at fsuhomeloans.com. Uh, this song, uh, that's off a of check your head. That's the Beastie Boys, if anybody's wondering. Anyhow, uh, it's crazy that you played this because now think about how random this is. A buddy of mine called me yesterday that I've known since middle school. And we Lewis were, Morales? No, it wasn't oh. Lewis Morales, it was Stephen Rafferty. And uh, oh, what's up, Steve? Yeah, there you go. And so we were uh we were catching up. It's been a couple months and just been too long. Long story short, as friends do, you know, you you, you just get right back on it, right? Like It's like no time had passed whatsoever, right? And we're laughing and talking, and he tells he references a guy that we went to high school and middle school with that I haven't heard from or about in 30 years, right? Louis Morales? No. no okay. uh, different guy. And this guy I didn't really care about at all, but I knew him, and, you know, I've not spent a single oh, day of my yeah. life thinking about him we've got those everybody's got those yeah 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 but then you hear the name you're like oh how's old slappity do how's he doing and you don't really mean it yeah no i don't wish you will he's not a bad guy he's just eh, whatever you know we weren't close it's like instead of how are they doing it what are they up to yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so he he proceeded to tell me but anyhow the point would be the last one of the last times i saw that guy <laughs> 
Well, I am an open book on this show. The last time I saw that guy, don't get nervous. Get ready, Matthew. Oh, get Kill nervous. the feed. Uh, here, yeah. We were going into a concert. It was the Beastie Boys. It was that album. It was for Check Your Head. And it was at Janice Landing. Anyhow, Steven and I were talking. Well, and I won't. That they guy, played that small of a venue? Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. Makes no sense. To this day, I don't know why the hell they did that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and we went to that show, and it was incredible. What a time. What a great time. Yeah, the, except for the fire marshal, Oh I'm no. sure. Well, listen, and they got shut down late because they, they went past the time for the uh, for the noise ordinance. Yeah, the curfew. But we were there, you know, we were right up front. And and I could have reached out and grabbed Ad Rock. Could have. Anyhow. He could have passed the mic to you. He could have indeed. But um, um, but uh, that guy was there, and, and we didn't hang with him, but we saw him in the parking lot. And you know how, and this is all I'll say about this, he was getting popped for smoking weed before oh, yeah. going in. Yep, yep. And but this is how things were so different, right? I that potentially was a ruin your life moment for him, unlike it would be today where they would just be like, oh, whatever. Yeah. Probably wouldn't even use a civil citation yeah, if that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I I remember thinking as we walked by, because they he was talking to the cop, and I remember thinking, Oh, it's all over for John. He's was that his name? Yeah. All right. And I was like, oh, Halfway this, there. this is going to suck. John Morales? No. <laughs> and I was like, this, that's a toughie. And all I remember is that he was, uh, Stephen, my buddy, was like, oh, no. And he was worried about the long-term impact of this problem, right? And I thought to myself, oh, no, no, no. I was more concerned. My man's going to miss the start of the show. That's <laughs> And we just laughed. We were laughing. Because he was like, oh, what's he going to do? I mean, he could get kicked out of school. And I'm like, oh, no, he's going to miss the first song. They're starting in like five minutes. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, that's yeah. There are those groups of friends who are acquaintances and you hang out enough that you know them and they know you. But you're still you're not going to call each other and say, hey, let's go catch oh, no, this no, or that. Right. Yeah. No. And when something happens to them at a college party or outside of Doke or whatever. Yeah. Right. You, you go from, oh, no, to this is our moment. We've got an opportunity. Like, you know, it's yeah. almost like he is the great offensive guard in the situation. <laughs> You're like, all right, we could do what we need to do now. It's a shame, but we move forward. The origination of uh, maintain uh, on this show has to do with that very thing uh, regarding entering Doe Campbell stadium, because for the better part of 20 years, and and you know what? I think people have been able to heed the warnings. The Cat 5 Maintain on this show has worked. It, it's, it's, it's drawn attention to a real problem that is omnipresent every class that comes through Florida State. And that is they're so excited to be away from home for the first time. This is all of us. We know what this is like. You have to learn the hard way. Everybody does. And you get so amped up that you're in control of your life. Finally, choices are yours. Good and bad. Kids tend to make bad choices on the regular, especially as it pertains to alcohol consumption and not only quantity, but time frame. These two usually don't marry well. And I got so tired of seeing people face down in the muck walking into Doe Campbell for the biggest games that I was like, we've got to do something on this show. We got to start talking to these students. You got to maintain, get some pasta on your belly when you get up for these big games. Ramen. If you have to, if, if, if it's an eight o'clock kick, if it's a night game, you got to understand you're in it for the long haul, baby. You, you, this fine. If you want to join your friends for the tailgate that begins at 9 a.m. or whatever it is. Yes. I mean, I got it. That's fine. I'm not telling you not to go. I'm telling you to be aware. Right. Plan that for the game nap. Kicks off at eight. Don't be too proud to take a nap. If you want to go hard in the paint early on in the day, then make sure around two o'clock you get a nap in. You're up by four thirty and you're right back in the groove. Everything's gonna be okay. But I would rather if you got into your twenties, if you're if you're an upperclassman mm, in Florida State, mm -hmm. that you don't need that option because you know better. Don't start till three or four o'clock in the afternoon, then you're good. This is something that I would think has to be issued for undergraduates that are traveling to New Orleans. Oh, Get it buddy. out of your system on Friday well, and Saturday. That, Get it out of your system. I and then will, treat Sunday with respect. Tom is asking me about Cat 5 Maintains and when was the last time that I declared one. There hasn't been one of great significance uh, in a long time. There hasn't been one where I say, okay, this feels on a Tuesday 
like we need to get out in front of this. <laughs> like this is, I could just tell we got to get out in front of this. And I, I'll tell you right now, and part of what I miss the most, uh, and everybody's nostalgic for the things, the way things were when they were in school and all that. I, I don't tend to fall into that trap too often. Uh, I, I recognize that there are plenty of things about the current situation, meaning technology and everything else that are better than when I was in school, for example. But one thing I do miss, and this has to do directly with winning and losing football games. One thing I do miss is that when you're good and you've sustained a level of great, not good, but great for a long period of time, as in five, six, seven, eight, nine years, there's an energy to home games and an anticipation for those games that begins the week of that Monday. It starts that Monday. And when I used to do shows at AJ Sports Bar and Grill, which is no longer here, I remember one of the things that I so thoroughly enjoyed was I'd get out of my car knowing that I was going in on a libations Friday to do the show. And sometimes I'd go over there earlier in the week to talk to John and Jason Jesco, who owned it, and, and about things that they were promoting, whatever it might be, right? And you could just feel it on Tennessee Street. though, Like the whole way from the strip all the way down to where AJ's was, all the, the strip beginning, like let's say, you know, Poor Paul's all the way to Ocala Road, right? Good choice. Man, I we haven't had that in forever. I want to feel that. I want to feel that that energy like, oh, my God, I'm going to be swept and then away. Maintain. And, yeah, and then maintain. Have to make choices. Hour number two, forthcoming. Stay with me. To imagine all the things you can accomplish with help from Southeast Portable Buildings. Are you a hoarder? Hoard some more. Get a storage shed. Mother in law moving in with you? Put her in a shed out back. I'm kidding. Still working on that engine that you're going to finish from last summer? Uh huh. Move it out to a new workspace with Southeast Portable Buildings. From she sheds and man caves to repair shops and trophy rooms, the possibilities are only limited to your imagination. Visit Southeast Portable Buildings today. This is Kyle, service manager from Barano Heating and Air. Schedule an appointment from your mobile device to learn about our total comfort service program. With guaranteed same-day service, 15% off necessary repairs, and $25 berry bucks to use towards air filters and other products. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Barano Heating and Air. Any day, anytime, anywhere. Online at BaranoAC.com. Portal license CAC 1816-186. Hey, no fans, our partner ISF Inc. is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF. Solving the future. Refreshing and simple. Two words you don't hear many people use to describe their experience going through the process of getting a home loan. That's what puts the Hamilton Home Loans experience in a category all their own. If you're buying or refinancing a home, Hamilton Home Loans will provide a personalized mortgage experience that is dedicated to making the process refreshingly simple. It all begins with an initial consultation with an experienced Hamilton Home Loans advisor to find out what your goals are in order to find the right mortgage to suit your specific needs. Then your personal home loan advisor will take you through all the steps from application, underwriting, approval, and closing, all the way to the front steps of your new home. Once you've experienced the Hamilton home loan process, you can be a customer for life and never have to pay lender fees again. For first responders, nurses, physician assistants, teachers, active and retired military, ask about the Hamilton for Heroes program. Personalized attention with your needs put first. Now that's refreshingly simple. Find out more at HamiltonHomeLoans.com. That's HamiltonHomeLoans.com. Equal housing lender. NMLS number 200719. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. Breaking news this hour from townhall.com. I'm John Scott. 
Four Marines have been killed. One is missing after an Osprey aircraft crashed in the Southern California desert. The official spoke on condition of anonymity because the investigation is still ongoing. No additional details made available. The MB-22B Osprey belonged to the 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing based at Camp Pendleton, north of San Diego. It was carrying five Marines when it went down Wednesday afternoon during training. Senate Republican Leader Mitch McConnell calling on the House to pass a Supreme Court security bill. Bob Agnew reports. Minority Leader Mitch McConnell took to Twitter after news police arrested a man threatening the life of Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. McConnell complains a bipartisan bill to expand security for justices, which passed unanimously in the Senate last month, has been blocked in the House. House Democrats say they're trying to expand the bill to provide more security for clerks and other workers at the high court. Bob Agnew report. Also at townhall.com, tonight's primetime congressional hearing regarding the January 6th Capitol attack will be shown across most networks with a notable exception. Tune in to ABC, NBC, CBS, or CNN, and you will find primetime coverage of the House Select Committee hearing on the January 6th riot at the U.S. Capitol. Tune in to Fox News. You will find its regular programming. Fox News says it will cover the hearing as news warrants. But Fox Business Network and Fox News Digital will carry the hearing. The broadcast networks are bringing out their anchors for coverage. David Muir for ABC, Lester Holt for NBC, and Nora O'Donnell for CBS. I'm Archie Zaraleta. Gasoline closing in on $5 a gallon nationwide for the first time ever, according to AAA. The Auto Club says the national average for a gallon of regular hit four ninety seven. dollars Prices are up a quarter in just the last week. More at townhall.com. Where are your family's old film reels, videotapes, and photos? Are they sitting in dusty shoeboxes and neglected bins at risk of completely fading away? Digitizing your aging media with Legacy Box is the safe and easy way to preserve and pass down your family's legacy. Simply send your Legacy Box kit filled with old home movies and pictures. Legacy Box does the rest, converting your moments to DVD or digital. Legacy Box has been trusted by over 1 million families and has over 10,000 five-star reviews. Be your family's hero. Unlock the memories trapped on VHS, camcorder tapes, and 8mm reels. Experience the joy and excitement of re-watching your wedding day, baby's first steps, and Christmas mornings. Feel relief knowing all those cherished moments are safe from fires and water damage. The Legacy Box Father's Day event is happening now. Go to LegacyBox.com slash LBOX to save 50%. Legacy Box is great for your family or as a gift for dad. That's LegacyBox.com slash LBOX for 50% off. LegacyBox.com slash LBOX. Highway 27 Grill and Barbecue just north of Havana have become your destination for the best food either side of the state line. But what if you want fresh seafood? Say no more. Kenny and the crew have got you covered with seafood so fresh, the only way you'll get it fresher is if you grow a set of gills. Highway 27 Grill and Barbecue, one mile north of the last light in Havana. Highway 27 Grill and Barbecue, over seven days a week. Get your fill at the grill. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Back by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience a more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.
about uh, – I kind of want to know the order he'd put these guys in Hall of Fame-wise. We did this exercise, you and I did. I'm going to ask him about it. Well, uh, we'll uh, a couple of other things, but I'm going to ask him about that. Too. It's a good exercise. Still sore from it. It's very <laughs> good. Mm-hmm. You geared up, buddy? You ready to go? Game five, Man. Rangers, Lightning, here we go. Funny you say that because once the mm-hmm. music started for this hour, as I said to Director Matthew off camera here, Boy, it just hit me. It's a big oh, game tonight. Big game, buddy. Big game it's gonna be tonight. A lot of fun. Really looking forward to it. Uh, I get to where I can. I've gotten. Listen, you you brought it up. You're right. This is true. For everybody who's had a team that's ever gone on a prolonged run of success understands that what it buys you in the beginning is just satisfaction, maybe pride, or whatever it might be. Right? You you get to boast about your squad. If they if they sustain it to what would only be considered an unreasonable level or a historically great level the way the lightning have then it's all house money everything's house money and what that leads to is the ability to enjoy games for what they are and not fear them it's amazing we love sport i think we're adrenaline junkies in this way we love sport but man if you really are passionate about your team florida state or anybody else then when the actual rubber meets the road, you're nervous. That's part of how you feel. You're kind of nervous because the thought of losing, the thought of the disappointment that comes with losing a big game outweighs the the joy, oddly. Coaches talk about this all the time. Players talk about this all the time. The wins that you have, you, you forget them out and it's on to the next. The losses linger. The losses linger. They weigh on you a little bit. Now, hopefully, you get to a place in your fandom as you get older where you have proper perspective and you place them there. None of us have that perspective whatsoever in our 20s or early 20s. All early 20s fans are idiots, every one of them, and myself included. We all took those games to mean the world, and they're just games, I, games I care about passionately, but you haven't lived enough to have any real perspective, so it's everything. It's like that has that's the biggest damn deal in the world when your team loses when you're 19 years old. You keep it. For three weeks, you're thinking about the the play that wasn't made, the call that went against you, the outcome that you're still pissed about and how it reverberates and affects the rest of your season and the rest of the games. And somewhere along the way, you're like, well, this is stupid. I mean, I've got two kids. I, I'll be all right. you know. Let's, but it takes a while. The point is, that's great. Even when you're adjusted, you still get nervous about big games, big moments for teams that you're passionate about and you love. But, man, when they won like the Lightning have won for as long as they have, and they've already achieved the ultimate goal, not once but twice back-to-back, three times total in their franchise history, of course, you you can just watch the game. You're going to root. You're going to care. Yeah. You, you're going to be you, excited. You there. want them to do it, but you know that if they don't, they don't. You've been there and you've seen it. I'm on a, a group text with a lot of family members from different parts of New York that are Rangers fans. Yeah. And extended you tell family. Them to go to hell? They're I mean, the, I would lead with it. As you might imagine, they're the ones who chirp more than we do. Oh, and, of course. And, you know, I'm just sitting back and watching. Like, I remember that. I remember when I was like you, insecure, you know, feeling this fleeting feeling that, ugh, are we ever going to get back? It's a long road. We got to the finals in 2015. That's, I mean, we're closing in on 10 years ago that we got to the finals. Hmm. And then you lose a game seven in the East against Pittsburgh and yeah. Washington after leading 3-2 in both of those series. Mm-hmm. So you hit the lows. And then, if you're lucky enough, you make it out the other side. You need a couple of bounces to go your way. But now you appreciate that. You're saying, well, if the bounces go our way, we're on our way. For me, the thing that gets me the most excited, I know tonight is a huge game. And to my wife, it's a massive one because it's 94. They haven't, She hasn't yeah. seen them climb the mountain. Yeah. But it's 30 minutes before puck drop on Saturday, no matter what happens. Because the pregame presentation in Tampa, you know it, yeah. is, I mean, you talk about adrenaline. It's You'll almost be... too long. It's it is. Like, it's like it's like going to a Springsteen show. Like he comes out for that third encore, and you're like, okay, you know, Bruce, I'm good. Right. I, I don't need to right. hear another song. I've heard the whole canon. I mean, we it's three and a half hours. Hit my back is starting to hurt. We yeah. Can go. yeah. The Lightning's pregame is a little bit like one of those shows where even though you love the artist, you're like, I've probably seen enough. We don't have to. You know what? Nebraska's a great record. I don't need the eighth song off that record right here. We do. Let, let, <laughs> when I took my dad in 15, it was a handshake game. We played Montreal. We ended up winning that game. Got him tickets to where we used to have season tickets. They go through the first intro. And, and in our day in 04, there was one. There was one intro. Everybody's right. You know, they're ready to go. Awesome. There are three in Tampa. Three different things that happened. Mm-hmm. And he goes, 
Jesus, Tommy, I can't take this anymore. When are they going to play? Because he's just so fired up and he's a little older. He's like, he's out of energy. I can't do this. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait for that on Saturday. Hopefully, either way, somebody could lose and be eliminated. So there's going to be that extra little pizzazz. A little something to it. Yeah. It'll be fun. Uh, It'll be fun. But I just, I'm just thinking, uh, fandom people can relate. We ended the last hour talking about the energy that we once felt. And a lot of that was born out of the, long stretch of success and all of the games were big and the product was great and it created a mood it created a feel it created uh in this town um sort of there was a vibe to this city and uh an energy if you will that has just been non-existent uh over this stretch of poor play now listen nobody has uh you know no reasonable no fair-minded person thinks that it's going to stay this way forever uh, just like we know, at some point, the Lightning's run of winning the Stanley Cup is going to end. It's already uh, more than we could have dreamt of. And I knew even back when Florida State was an annual uh, threat to win the national title and was uh, annually in the top four, I, that couldn't last forever. It It never has anywhere else. And it's not going to uh, last forever. So just try to appreciate this. Now, again, it's it's a little bit easier as you get older to have the moment to step back from whatever it is you're watching or whatever you're immersed in and have uh, the ability to appreciate it, to take a second to appreciate it. I told you this story. I'll never forget this. When we played Oklahoma and Norman, and I went to that game with my dad and my good buddy Eric, and they were doing the uh, they were doing the pregame festivities, and they were, we were all about to stand uh, for the national anthem, and they it was the anniversary was nine, uh, nine years yeah yeah, yeah. nine years nine eleven, and they were they were talking about that, and uh, and so anyhow in that moment it's easy to do you're you're, you're reminded, but I'm glad I did because I didn't always in that moment I took the time to look around that stadium and realize who I was with where I was, you know, I told everybody on this show for years, I've got family that went to OU and we had a family farm and all of that. I just, I took time to appreciate it to really, and then we got our heads kicked in, but, but beforehand I really did appreciate everything about it. I was like, this is it's a beautiful day here. And I'm so fortunate to get the opportunity to do this. And obviously you're reminded of those that don't in a situation like that or sure. didn't have the chance. And so, yeah, I took the time to appreciate that. And it, it's, I'd like to get, I, I, I'll, just, I, I'll say this. We've been bad long enough, Tom. I'd like to, appreci- <laughs> I'd like to appreciate ah, being good again. Now. I'd like to take the time to truly appreciate the good that's back. This is a segment from the FM dial right after the switch about the Buccaneers. We've had this exact same talk. Yeah. When there's enough time pass yep. where the last title or great moment or in run. your franchise or program's history when does it run out and now you're starting to get aggravated so how long were we able to successfully emotionally mm-hmm. rely on the super bowl victory uh in 02 right like i how long did that last i think a good 10 years it did which is it happened in, at the fm dial which is now 10 years ago this august can you believe that that's unbelievable the switch from am to fm and that was 10 years post Buccaneer Super Bowl season. So 20 years ago, we had that run, and they didn't win a playoff game until last year, two seasons ago with Brady. They had not won one single playoff game. I know. It got old, buddy. It did. Oh, I it still, did. We, we reached a breaking point. I, I want to say like 09 or 2010, we were starting to be like, oh, yeah, hey, yeah. man. Why am I rooting so hard for our first win of the season against see, Green Bay in October? Right, we don't like, why have, am I happy? We don't have to suck, guys. We, <laughs> yeah. we could be better. You know, we could be a better yeah. team here. Tenard Jackson and LeGarrette Blunt, Blunt are players now. Come on, we can build around them. Yeah. So for, for FSU, I want for the kids because there, there's now been a whole graduating class that never saw anything, period. At least my colleagues, my classmates at Florida State, mm. I wasn't there till the, the spring of 2006. But they had the Miami Monday night game at home. <laughs> Eight sacks and the muff at the end, all that stuff. That's great. They had that moment. They thought they were better. They won the ACC that year. So they had something. And then we went through the really down spiral of the lost decade. Mm. These poor kids think of us as a basketball school that are going there right now as seniors. 
I want for them the opportunity yeah. to walk into that building like Oklahoma in 2011, which is incredible, which was the the most eerie and amazing thing I've ever felt walking into Doe Campbell Stadium an hour before the game. That place was unbelievably electric. In the same way you want that for them, I wanted that for you, and that's why I got so excited when we went out to Pasadena because I got to watch you appreciate, absorb, take in this incredible moment. And it, oddly, this sounds strange for people, but it meant less to me. I knew it meant less to me sure. than it did you. And, uh, you know, I, I've been in attendance for their national championship victories and losses, all of them. And I was just kind of like, oh, we get to do it again. I didn't know if we we're going to get to do it again. Great. That, that felt good to me. I was excited. It was the culmination of a lot of things. But to see it from your eyes, to look at you and you taking that moment in after you had been in the midst of the lost decade as a student right. and not seeing the successes that I had seen, I was happy. Yeah. Yeah, because we're dear friends, and I was just happy to see you happy. It was great. And you had sports PTSD, and that's when Trey Mason broke away. I'm thinking, wow, so it ends like it began mm. as a student. Mm. You're going to take me across the country, though. To drop the hammer. All I could see is Ty Jones and Christian Ponder or Marcus Sims or Jarman <laughs> Fortson. Or every like, disappointing wow, moment of the last So year. you're going to do that again to me. And that's where, like, in my household, you've got uh, friends who are fans of different teams, maybe like the Rangers, mm -hmm. before I mentioned Eric. Like, mm -hmm. if they ever win the World Series, you know how much that's going to mean to him after Nelly Cruz in right field? Oh, oh I, I still, mean, my I, God. I still ache for him. That I, I couldn't believe I watched that live, yeah. My, my wife and mother-in-law are Vikings fans. If they ever win the mm -hmm. Super Bowl, it won't come close to what the Brady Super Bowl meant to you and me. Right. It'll be the thing forevermore. Anytime yeah. sports comes up, they'll show that, the, I mean, there they are with their hat, their Super Bowl championship hat. I will say, I do like that not only, yeah, you're right, but I like that we housed Kansas City. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah. Beat that ass. And we first guessed it. Yeah, we did. You can check back we, on the scuttlebox. Yeah, we did. Like, we did. There's This one, it just this seems kind of right easy. For us. It, I was like, man, you know, I think we're going to, we kind of thought we might beat their ass, and it happened. So I just, that feels good because they were this force that can't be stopped and all that. Right. When you were talking about the thin nature of Florida State's roster yesterday and, and how it's akin to the NFL, a salary cap roster. Yeah. If you're missing both of your starting tackles as an NFL team, yeah, you're screwed. You're in deep trouble. Yeah. Especially against that group. Yep. Yeah. You're, you, you, you may have a hard day at the office. And uh, yeah, yeah, that felt good. Well, let's do this. Um, we got to solve for the future and we got kind of a fun segment to do it with, with our friends from ISF uh, because we do have Tom, the aforementioned from yesterday, some totals that were released out of the ACC. Bring it. God, two things I love, ACC football and gambling. Next, Jeff Cameron Show 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chat TV. This is Ken Wondergem, owner of Gem Maz of Tallahassee. Since the new car supply shortage, it's common knowledge that your trade-in is worth two to $3,000 more. However, other manufacturers' dealers are adding two to $3,000 to the price of their new cars. So you end up losing your equity. At Gem Maz of Tallahassee, you'll keep your equity since we will not mark up the price of the new Mazda you want while still giving you more for your trade. And since we're not marking up our new car prices, our pre-sold list is growing by the day. Reserve your new Mazda today and discover Mazda's award-winning quality and the high level of service and care you'll receive at Gem Mazda, where there's no additional markup on any of our new luxury performance vehicles. Gem Mazda of Tallahassee, where we take our slogan seriously. No games, no gimmicks, just a gem of a deal and no additional markups. Come see us soon, Capital Circle Northwest, just up from West Tennessee Street, and always open at gemmazda.com. Every day, Sellers makes life a little better for homeowners, helping them find the best design ideas for their homes with the best quality tile, carpet, and hardwood flooring. Even mosaics, ceramic, and vinyl solutions are at their fingertips in their remarkable showroom. Maybe it's time for you to get the seller's advantage for your home or office. Find them on Capital Circle Northeast, just north of Mayhem Drive, or online at sellerstile.com. For style, quality, and design, get the seller's advantage. In Tallahassee, call 656-8453. Hey, this is Dustin Rivas. During the pandemic, I noticed restaurants struggling with online ordering and watched as all the major third parties took advantage of our local restaurants and thought there must be a better way, which is why I created foodiestakeout.com. The unique thing about Foodies Takeout is that restaurants keep 100% of their order revenue versus splitting upwards of 30% with the third parties like Uber Eats and Bite Squad. At Foodies Takeout, 
you can find some of your favorite restaurants, such as Jerry's Midtown Cafe, Misty's Kitchen in Frenchtown, Casa Grande, and even El Jalisco. Or if you're on the north side of town, check out Horizons Bar and Grill. Why not give us a try? Head to foodiestakeout.com or text foodies to 230-9456, and I'll even give you 10% off your first meal. Supporting local restaurants has never been easier. Visit foodiestakeout.com. Let's be honest, we all have way too much stuff. Maybe your storage closet is full, your garage is full, or the guest bedroom is a mess. Call Southeast Portable Buildings, 580-6400, or visit them online at southeastportablebuildings.com. When you need a plumber quick, how long is an acceptable time to have to wait? Uh, yeah, hey, it's the Millers again. I'm just calling you about our little plumbing problem. Two hours? Hey, uh, we were hoping you can get here soon because the water is getting really bad. I mean, it's... Please hurry. Four hours? I know you said you were on your way, but, uh... Honey, tell the kids to drink water. Eight hours? Don't worry about us. At m l Plumbing, you'll never have to wait long for quality, dependable service right when you need it. At m l Plumbing, we listen to our customers, and our qualified technicians aim to achieve 100% customer satisfaction. So the next time you need plumbing work or repairs, think of the name m l Plumbing, your local plumbing experts, commercial or residential. Give us a call, 850-575-9393, or visit us online at mnlplumbing.com. m l Plumbing, for all of your plumbing needs. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show is sponsored by the legendary team at Hamilton Home Loans. Great rates, cutting-edge technology, and transparent communication is the recipe for a five-star mortgage experience at FSUHomeLoans.com. This year's segment as we solve for the future, just like they do, over 80 unique clients, over 1,500 projects, over 40-plus years across most of the country, most of the nation. So that tells you uh, the viability, the expertise, the reliability of ISF in executing your vision. You know, you might work in state government, and you know that can be difficult, like trying to solve for the future there. Um, and, and technologically advanced to a place where you can be more efficient and realize your goals, um, ISF can help you get there. And if you want to learn more about them, ISF.com, you can read about it, their expertise. Again, 40 years in the business, solving for the future. And we need to do that right now, Tom. Let's let's get some gambling uh, money in order. Mm-hmm. Let's everybody figure out what we're doing. You, got your, you guys got your money? You know what you're doing? Want a little help here? Let's go through these. Uh, who dropped these? Was this DraftKings? Oh, that's correct. One day they'll sponsor us. Well, they need to get on it because uh, I, I feel like we would I mean, we would do well by them. Uh, I, I I'm gambling on golf right now on DraftKings, uh, and like uh, you're placing a wager. You're doing a segment and you're just typing. Away. No, no, I I placed the wager already. I have, uh, and and it's a good day. It's a good day to start. Which I, team did you pick in the live? I. <laughs> Uh, I did have Matthew Fitzpatrick today at the RBC, and he uh, is in the clubhouse with a cool six under. Appreciate you, Matthew Fitzpatrick. Uh, Rory McIlroy, by the way, four under as well. Good for you. Good for you, Rory. Uh, but anyhow, that's uh, that's that's neither here nor there. We're going to be looking at ACC win totals, and uh, for our purposes, uh, I do believe that uh, the sportsbook at DraftKings gave us some numbers to look into, and we love futures, do we not? Love them. All right. You pick which teams you want me to take a look at here and solve. I've got three schedules up right now on my uh, browser because I think that's what this game is. You look at the schedule and you judge context of where games are and all that kind of stuff. So we'll start with NC State. 
NC State, which could be a favorite in the Atlantic. In fact, they are one of the favorites to win the Atlantic this year. Yes, but nine to one to win the ACC. And what are they to win the Atlantic? Four to one, three to one. Well, anything above two to one is good odds, I would say. By the way, you can get Northwestern plus 13 right now against Nebraska for a game on Saturday, August the 27th. If you just were, if that's something you were looking at, that's easy. Final score is 13 to six. I was going to say, I don't know if the two teams combined can score 13 points there. So you may want to take those points. I'm just saying, man. uh, Yeah, team futures. Well, there's, by the way, you can do team futures for the national championship and there's all that stuff too. But I, I, I like looking at these numbers. So North Carolina State. Win total. Did we establish that was nine and a half? Yeah, I think that's yeah, nine and a half. Because we you did want me to double check. Yeah, double I check. think it's important that we get it right if we're gonna solve for the future. I gotta give that's people correct. the right number. Gotta numbers. know the now to be able to solve for yeah, the future. Yeah, we you had those eight numbers. And a half, yeah, eight and it's half. eight and a half. Well, I'm going over all day long. I'm going over all day long there. I like them to uh to cover that number because I think that they have a real good chance to win the Atlantic. In fact, I think they have a very good chance to win the ACC. And if you're going to win the ACC, I think you're going to have to win nine games at least. Yeah, I'd say that you're going to get halfway home, well, nearly halfway home in their first four games. It's East Carolina, Charleston Southern, Texas Tech, and UConn. That's how they start their season. Yeah. yeah. So there's four right there. You're on the winning track. Then they go to Clemson and they play us. That's their tough stretch. Then after that, it's Syracuse on the road, a bye week, Virginia Tech, right back on that horse, doing some things. For my purposes, whenever we look at these numbers and it's eight and a half, I just need to win nine games, man. I don't need them to be juggernauts. I don't need them to be dominant. Do I have nine wins on that schedule? I think the answer is a resounding yes. Right. In that case, if you're picking a good team, you're looking for four losses. That's what you're trying That's to find. That's what you're trying, you're trying to find. Okay, so Clemson. Clemson at, on the road. Who they beat a year ago. Right. Florida State. Well, they're Wake, hosting that game. They are. And Wake, they'll be the favorites of that game. They will be. Wake Forest at home again. They lost that game by three in a war. Uh, Yeah. At Louisville, at North Carolina. So you got five candidates. If they I, go three and two in those, you're fine. Yeah. I mean, I, it's hard to find uh, four losses there. Yeah, they, you, you're right. So we're cruising past the over there. How about Wake Forest? Also eight and a half. Under. Uh, I I keep saying this because now you think about some of the games they won last year, 45-42 over NC State. I mentioned that a moment ago. This was sort of a theme with them. Uh, Their defense was not good. Uh, Last year at one point when they were 8-0, they they looked, they were kind of a a mirage. They had an 8-0 record, and their defensive numbers were top 30. They finished the season outside the top 90 in a lot of important categories defensively. I just don't think they're going to get enough stops, and I don't think they can win all of those really close offensive explosion games. Uh, Hell, I think them trying to win here is going to be a tall task. In fact, I'm going under their win total. That's another situation in which a team plays Clemson the week before they play us. It's a beautiful situation. So they host Clemson. No matter there, that's going to be a tough game for them to win. They come on the road to play us. Yeah. So the other candidates, if you're trying to find four losses. Yeah, because they're eight and a half as well? Yes. I'm going under. At Louisville, maybe. Maybe. At NC State. That's a loss. Week of the they're they're, they're going to lose that game. North Carolina. So it's going to be close. They also play Army this year, but yeah, I, I don't know. They'll, they'll outscore Army. They, I, I think they're going to lose to us, and I think they're going to lose to uh, NC State, and so I just need them to lose one. Clemson, that's, now they're at nine, so you need to lose one more. i got to lose one more. Okay. This could be a close one. It'll be close. I'm still, I, if I had to bet it, I'd take the uh, under there. I think they go something like seven and five. Louisville, six and a half. Uh, over, over. I think uh, Louisville will win seven games. Here's who they play. We'll do a W's and L's rapid mm-hmm, fire mm-hmm. at Syracuse to open the season. Win. At UCF. Win. Hosting us. Son of a. <laughs> they're going to be favored. Uh, yeah. I, All right. Kind of like us. All right. Like us. Ooh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. USF. Win. All right. At Boston College. Win. At Virginia. Win. Really? Okay. Man, Virginia sucks. By week hosting Pitt. Pitt returns a lot on both lines. I learned that. Today. But they don't return their first round NFL quarterback. That's correct. Um, Flip of the coin. Wake Forest in Louisville. Flip of the coin. All right. James Madison. Win. At Clemson. Loss. NC State. Hosting. 
loss at Kentucky. Ooh, ooh, could come down so they got to get fat early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think they're a seven-win team. We only got to get over six and a half. That's right. We're going yeah. over, baby. We're going over. There's seven wins there. All right. And finally, before we get to Corey, us. Oh, we're doing W's and L's. That no, number is at six and a half. Oh, we Corey. don't have to. We do W's and L's all the time. What right. do you think? Just but is that number at DraftKings six, six and a half? Six and a half. Over. I agree. Yeah, jump on the I, over the there. bell curve says that seven or eight are the two likeliest outcomes. Yeah, I think so that's I think to. that's accurate. Yeah, I'd go over, and I mean that. I, I'll bet that for real. Uh, I'll take the over there. Like this isn't like my heart. I'm gonna bet it, and I'm good at differentiating the two. I I, I bet against FSU uh, when I'm sure that they're gonna lose. I can do it. Those were good Atlantic solutions. Maybe we could do coastal solutions one day. I can't wait. We'll do coastal solutions soon enough. Let's bring Corey in. Let's talk to Corey. Do we want to talk to him right now, or do we want to break and come back? A little short guy. Short break. All right. Hang in there, Corey. We'll get to you. Over for us. Jeff Cameron, 93.3 Real Talk Radio. War Chant TV. Your local news now. Two weeks after a deadly school shooting reignited debates about gun violence and securing schools, Governor DeSantis signed a bill Tuesday that will require mental health crisis intervention training for on-campus officers. The measure will also make other school safety changes, such as emergency drills for active assailant and hostage situations, bomb threats, and natural disasters. Those will be monitored now by the state. A Leon County Sheriff's Office deputy uncovered several illegal substances while arresting a man for driving with a suspended license. The deputy noticed a repeat traffic offender sitting in the driver's seat of a vehicle at a convenience store in the 6600 block of Thomasville Road around 8 30 p.m. The deputy ran a driver's license check and confirmed the driver 31 year old Maxwell Collins was not allowed to drive because his license was suspended. While making the arrest the deputy noticed the smell of marijuana in the vehicle prompting a search. The deputy found fentanyl, cocaine, meth, THC oil and about 1.6 pounds of marijuana in the search. This is Rachel Linnae with your World Talk 93.3 local news update brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Scattered thunderstorms likely this afternoon, otherwise mainly cloudy skies. Highs around 91, west winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Mainly cloudy skies expected tonight, scattered thunderstorms likely, lows around 73. Scattered thunderstorms likely tomorrow, high of 91, sunshine mixed with clouds at times. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 88. See Nice Tire and Auto Service at 4792 Bluntstown Highway today. The ASC trained technicians at Nice take the guesswork out of fixing your car. That's why wherever you see the Goodyear sign, you'll find what you want in tires and service. From preventative maintenance to a major overhaul and everything in between, you name it. Plus, Nice's services are backed by a nationwide limited warranty. Stop by Nice Tire and Auto Service. 4792 Bloodstown Highway, just west of Capitol Circle. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk Bring in Corey Clark, Warchant.com. Hello, Corey. How the hell are you, brother? What's up, buddy? How are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm doing good. It's good to see you. Hey, I got to see your son in a dunk contest last night. Yeah, he dunked backwards. Uh, just did a little wimpy sort of backwards dunk, didn't well, he? Well, and that's what Brady's Brady's note to him was, was like, yeah, you got to do it with more authority. Yeah, I know. I saw it. Uh, Christy filmed it, and uh, all I said was, I know you're probably a little intimidated. He's a little, little shy sometimes in front of large groups like that. And he said he thought the ball was going to slip. He was worried hmm. the ball. He said the ball, the ball was slippery, and he was worried he was going to slip out of his hand, and he didn't want to miss the dunk. Right. And so I said, "All right, well, fair enough." I said, "But violence is always the answer in a dunk contest." 
Yeah. Violent. You're going to get oohs and ahs if you hammer that thing. Like, just yeah. go up and what, like tomahawk it. Oh, if, I said violence. You yeah. gotta, you, come on, man. Um, we got to go watch it. Dominique back in the day. Like, Dominique yeah. wasn't doing crazy aerial stuff. He was just emphatic. Violent. Dunk, yeah. like trying to tear the rim off. So next time Bryce is in a dunk contest, he's got some notes now. He'll know how to he'll know now, how to handle it. In fairness, I don't want people to get the wrong idea. He's 14. He can't dunk on a regulation rim yet. It was nine feet and he was right. dunking on a nine foot rim. So, so he did a reverse dunk on a nine foot goal. I was pretty impressive, buddy. He's got those Cameron jeans. Yeah, you know, he gets mad that uh I don't know why he's jealous uh, that his old man can still touch the rim at 51 or 50. Mm. I'll be 51. Yeah, and I feel like that would make him like encouraged. Should, like, yes. man, I'm gonna, I got a chance here. Yeah, I know. I well, you know what? Meanwhile, look at what Brady has to look at for his <laughs> role model. No, buddy, you are a lean, mean machine right now. You're just not tall. Well, I and I'm never and he I'm never gonna get tall, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, it's not suddenly gonna happen. No, no. no, but you're in great shape. I don't don't make fun of yourself. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Uh, all right, all that. right. Let's do let's do this. Which of the guys would you place in the Hall of Fame first? We got a chance earlier in the week to see the names. Obviously, all time greats there in the form of Peter Warwick and Warwick Dunn. And I, I you know, I just I started thinking about because you and I are old hats. We go yeah. back. We yeah. remember the history of this great program. There was a time, folks, if you're out there, the Florida <laughs> State was really good. Every year they had a bunch <laughs> of all Americans. <laughs> and. These are guys that we've been waiting on and, you know, probably should have already been in the Hall of Fame. But then I started thinking, I wonder who Corey would have. Who would he pick if you could only take one of the three that were nominated here that are on the list? Who would you have in first? Peter Warwick. Yeah, me too. Uh, I, I think that's the easy one. I think number two is the one that's debatable. But Peter Warwick is still one of the five best wide receivers I've ever seen in college football. He's I just nuts. I, 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 and he would translate to today. Um, he would translate in any era. Um, he just, it was, he, it was like a mixtape, man. If y'all go back and watch his highlights on YouTube, it is a mixtape. He's making dudes fall down and buckle to a knee all the time. Um, no, I'm not quite sure what happened. I know he got injured in the NFL and mm -hmm. I think that kind of, it shouldn't, but I think that always devalues a, a player's greatness in college is if, if they don't pan out in the NFL, but man, that dude, that dude is one of the five, three, five best wide receivers I've ever seen. And I think he was the best wide receiver in the country two years in a row. He and was. That's, that's very rare. You know, by the way, and it's interesting, Corey, because I think another thing that is rare is that when you're watching a player who's truly transcendently great, who's preternaturally awesome, right? Sometimes it takes a little time to go by and you reflect at their greatness. We knew in the moment. Everybody yeah. in that stadium knew what they were watching was truly special and transcendent. Like you knew, I'm probably never going to see a guy, and if I do, maybe one other guy that has ever looks anything close to this. Yeah, yeah, it was in. He did everything too. Now he could throw. He he did reverses. He had yeah. the one against Louisiana Tech, the double triple reverse. Um, but he was just, uh, and he was a, and he was a competitor, man. Like he was just a compet. He wasn't one of those okay. wide receivers that would run out of bounds just or duck down. He was always trying to get extra yards and make people miss. And I think, you know, 97, he had that breakout game against Clemson. Remember where he had like three long touchdowns and over 300 yards of total offense. But then the rest of that year was just kind of eh, nothing, <laughs> nothing extra special. And then 98 came around and it started in the, uh, who they play? A&M, Texas A&M to start yep. that season with Winky. And then uh, he was just incredible the whole season. And I think Florida State fans rightly will never forgive Mark Rick for the uh, game plan and 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 fia in the Fiesta Bowl where Peter Warwick had one catch. Uh, it, it's just incredible. And the first play of the game, you remember this, Jeff. I'm sure. I don't know how drunk you were that day, but I'm sure. I'm sure it still sticks with you. They lined him up at quarterback for the very first snap of the game, and they got a delay a game, and then they never lined him up at quarterback again. I was at the game. And, yeah, we all I know, know. and we all know what would have happened had Winky been healthy. Uh, we would have drubbed Tennessee by 40. Or if you get it to your best player 12 times. That's the other part, is that yeah. midway through that game, when it became apparent that Rooster sucked and had no chance to do anything, <laughs> right? Uh, I was he could throw a little he could throw a little out pass that he could man. throw a stop pass to Peter Warwick, maybe. Man, man, all I was screaming at the time was just put Peter Warwick at quarterback and let him run around. Yeah. Just let him run around. Just like yeah. that guy is going to make a play. It, oh, it drives me nuts. All right, so I would go Warwick Dunn next. You wouldn't? I think I would go Janikowski um, only because of – and we lived through this era. Um, yeah. Uh, just – he, we had never seen anything like that dude. 
It, I don't know that we still have. Like he was a star <laughs> kicker. Yeah. And he was like uh bigger yeah. than life. He was. He, he was also borderline criminal. Yeah. And that's my issue. Like Warwick <laughs> Dunn is actually a very good person off the field. I think that's been well documented. Yeah. Janikowski, not so much. So if it's even may I don't know if the College Football Hall of Fame cares about that kind of stuff. Um, if we're talking about on field exploits, Warwick Dunn was my all time favorite player at Florida State, probably. Just you loved everything about him. But I don't think he was as unique a running back as Janikowski was at his position. That's, That's all. fair. That's fair. I still, I, I think at the end of the day, because it's so close, I would just go Warwick Dunn because he's a freaking awesome dude. Um, and, and Jano was not. Uh, Correct. But, but, but yeah. Do you remember Warwick Dunn's, uh, I, it might be, uh, what is it called? Apocryphal? That's the word, right? Mm -hmm. I think it happened when the when the Bucks were interviewing him before the draft and they asked him what he did best. Do you remember what his answer was? I don't. I score touchdowns. <laughs> I mean, that's a great answer, right? That's an incredible answer. And then they draft him in the first round and he scored a lot of touchdowns. Yeah, and he would have scored even more if Mike Allstott hadn't gone and vultured everything. Yeah, he vultured he would get him out of the one and then also I would score from an inch away. I saw some stat again. where uh where there's only been three running backs in history that have had like 10 or 12 1000 yard seasons from scrimmage. Mm. And it's Emmett Smith, like Marshall Falk and Warwick Dunn. In the so, NFL I'm talking about. Warwick Dunn was ahead of his time though, remember? Yeah. Because he was that he could do it all. He caught the ball to the backfield. Now he wasn't as good as Marshall Falk, but he was again ahead of his time. I think Warwick Dunn, you can make a strong case for Warwick Dunn to be in the Hall of Fame. If you're looking at total yards. Oh, you're talking about the NFL Hall of Fame. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it is a no-brainer. About That's the point I really want to make. All three of these dudes, it is a no-brainer. Oh, like, sure. Janikowski is the only two-time Groves Award winner. He was, a, I think, a three-time All-American. He was just nuts. He had highlight reels. And then Warwick Dunn and Peter Warwick are two of the best that's ever done it. It's just a matter of time they'll all be in. Um, but it's kind of odd that Peter Warwick isn't already in. And what bothered I me. I agree with that is when that list was released earlier in the week, all the national writers were like, wow, there's some big names in here. And they would list this guy and that guy and that guy. And they didn't mention Peter Warwick. And I just don't want Peter Warwick to be lost to history because in the moment, Peter Warwick was as big a star and as awesome a college football player as you would have ever seen. I don't. He didn't win the Heisman because of Dillard's. I'll never understand why Warwick Dunn wasn't even a Heisman candidate, ever, really. But Peter Warwick would have won the Heisman in 99 if not for Dillard's. He was unquestionably the best player in the country. And I just don't want him to be lost in time. And he definitely deserves to be in the Hall. But, heck, it took Marvin 30 years to get in. Which is absurd. By the way, sure. do you do this? Because we we do long for some of the uh, simpler times in college football. That's well documented during this time of upheaval. But do you do what I do when the list comes out? Because I have a feeling you do. You go through every name. Yeah. And then you try to remember vividly their careers. And something about this latest list of 80 whatever guys, I was sitting there like D'Angelo Williams, Garrison Hirsch, your boy from yeah. Georgia. He's in that, he's on that list. But I, it's, Dwight Freeney's on that list. Simeon Rice is on that list. Um, you could go on and on and on, but sometimes it puts a smile on your face when you see, you know, Paul Poluzny uh, or whatever from uh, Penn State, right? Sure. Um, and and Tim Couch is on that list and Michael Bishop and I. I can remember Michael every Bishop. One of, Michael Bishop. Michael Bishop on. got Florida State into a na that national championship yes, game we were talking right. about was because of Michael Bishop. God bless Michael because, Bishop. Well, no, he lost. He was the quarterback at Kansas State. I know. And, and, yeah. I oh, I see. God, God bless, bless him. Yeah, he lost. He lost to Dat Win. The Davey O'Brien Award winner. Yeah, that's right. That's right. He came yeah, up that was, short. And uh, but that was I think it was Mandel. Like he listed all the big names and he listed James Laronitis. Remember him, the linebacker oh, from Ohio yeah, State. Yeah, yeah. It's like, come on, man. You're telling me James Laronitis is a bigger bigger name than Peter Warwick? Are no, of course not. But that's Mandel, and he's an ass, and that's not well, surprising. Well, he doesn't call people names. I was, just, way, I was just pointing out that I don't want Peter Warwick to be lost to history. Also, Antoine Randall L. was on that list. Antonio Langham was on that list. Eric Berry was on this list. Man, this is... It's a list of lists this I year. I feel like buddy. they got to put they got to put fifty guys in a year. Like you just just I don't know how many how many do they put in twenty ten I don't know yeah, I but they should be the total yeah it should be fifty like all these guys should be and who cares but it's crazy that it, it really is bizarre. I mean it'll happen obviously but Peter Warwick was the best player in the country twenty three years ago and he's still not in the Hall of Fame. He was uh and and he was at the time for what people thought was uh, reprehensible suspended for something that he would not be suspended for now which is simply that uh, he had a hookup and a chick gave him a shirt. Man, he would be what he'd, we be doing? Spokes, he'd be a what spokesman for Dillard's. Do? That's right. He'd be doing commercials for Dillard's. <laughs> hey, you want a good deal at Dillard's? I know. I know I know people for I you. I know people. I can help you out. Come on, <laughs> shopping with me baby. <laughs> yeah.
Be good, Corey. Good seeing you, brother. Peace. Later. Yeah, man, that list, though, I did it. I went down memory lane for like a good 20. You know who's on the list? Luke Keekley. Oh, man. That's like no brain. Do it now. Rush him in. He's a yes, guy who. Hurry been... up. By the way, he's a guy who. Been... Yeah, hurry up. He wants to remember it. Yes. Uh, by the way, he's a guy who I think is helped out. Now, look, he was two time first team All American. I'm not saying he wasn't great at Boston College. He was. But his NFL career was so prolific, it helps him out. I can remember, though. So the funny part is you're listing all these players' names, and I remember just about everybody, but you're covering 15, 20 years' worth of football at minimum there. And uh, more than that, yeah. I remember covering Florida State at the time that Luke Keekley was playing at Boston College, and you keep seeing his name at the top of the conference because you get the conference. Oh, the pamphlet. tackles, yeah. And like, oh, They're my God. They're padding his stats. Yes. It, it was frequently thought that they were changing the numbers, and there was resentment. That's what I was trying to hint yeah, at. There was yeah. resentment. Then you watched him play because most people weren't watching Boston College play for good reason. And you went, "Oh my God, that guy is." Yeah. How the everywhere. hell did they get him? He's a dominant player. How much money would Alabama have paid him? About two years into his career. Oh man, I, yeah. Luke Keekley would have been worth ten million dollars. Ken Dorsey's on this list, by the way. Reggie Bush is on this list. Tim Tebow is on this list. So it's a lot of names this time around. Julius Peppers. 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 <laughs> forgot about that one, oh didn't it's you? one of the greatest promos ever i gotta give them credit for that yeah and that's like something mike ryan does well that is the peppers that, pepper, pepper, peppers <laughs> rocky cow was the linebacker from ou's on there you remember him what years oh he beat us in the national championship oh, that game. year mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that was a hard game to watch that's a he was part of the reason that it was hard to watch how many quarters before we get to 17 points golly that was nine that was tough kellen moore is on that list Kellen Moore. Boise State. Oh, my goodness. Eric Somewhere, uh, yeah, Brett Musburger is very, very interested in that name. Uh, Corey Ooh. Moore is on the list, and I only want to say Corey Moore is on this list for a reason. It was the best ever was he got completely shut down in the national championship game against Florida State. Um, and I believe, was it Ross? Yeah, I can't remember which which player of ours told them to drink a big glass of shut the hell up, but it was <laughs> hilarious. Was a happy Gilmore thing. Brandon, I think did that said that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. That's correct. It was funny. So who loves whom more? Uh, Mike Patrick and John Shire, uh, <laughs> Musburger and Kellen Moore, or Gary Danielson and Tim Tebow? Oh, Gary Danielson, and Tim Tebow. He was unbuckling every time they got a Florida game. He couldn't wait. Musburger and Kellen Moore was uncomfortable. That was a weird thing because he always had every year that opener with Virginia Tech or whoever they would play. Mm. Kellen Moore. Yes. Yes. I mean, like whoa. <laughs> Brent. No, 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 but you're forgetting the kind of over-the-top excess in which we had. I mean, they're, they're, I can't say what I want to say. <laughs> right. I can't say. Vern is say. chortling and, and Gary's <laughs> going, oh, it's like Eckersley. I got to go find that clip. <laughs> I'm getting uncomfortable. Jeff Cameron, show 93. Three Let's real to the three. CBS audience. War Chat TV. Physical stress in our bodies can take its toll as the years go by. Whether you're looking to get back into an old sport or just want to spend more time outdoors to explore all life has to offer in our beautiful city, the dedicated team at TOC is here for you every step of the way. You can trust TOC for all your orthopedic needs. And now, scheduling an appointment has never been easier. Just visit TeamTOC.com and click Schedule Online. That's TeamTOC.com. Paul's Termite and Pest Control has been serving North Florida for over 50 years. When you've been around that long, you're certain to see change. Back in the day, almost all of our competitors were just like us, owned and operated by local people to keep their lawns green, protect North Florida customers from pests, and their homes from termites. We always had a great respect for our competitors because they truly cared about the well-being of our community as we at Paul's do. But things began to rapidly change. The local competition began selling out to big companies based in places like Orlando, Atlanta, and Memphis, local decisions being made by people who know very little about the unique needs of North Florida. And now, many of them are being bought by international companies based overseas. Local decisions made by people in Great Britain, in our industry, being local does matter. Paul's Termite and Pest Control is still owned, managed, and operated by people that live in North Florida. This is our community. We proudly make it our home, and all of our decisions are made locally to serve our customers. For the elimination of termites and other pests, and a greener lawn, too. Call Paul's. We'll get them all. 
Hey, no fans. Our partner, ISF Inc., is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF. Your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. T-Spark Enterprises, roofing and construction services. T-Spark, T-SparkConstruction.com. We conquer all peaks. We fix those darn leaks. Call 850-766-1340. Enterprises, roofing and construction services. Tees Park, Tees Park Construction Prices on the TCC one three three one two zero four. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Here's what you missed on the Greg Tiss Show. We need to have history. We need to have literature. It deserves an explanation. We don't need to be promoting lifestyles that come into play for your average elementary school. Well, I had an experience with this. When my daughter was in school, her teacher gave her a book to read, but then she asked me what the C word is. That was in the book. That was in the book. Okay, talking so about the C word. So you're talking about conservatives, right? <laughs> <laughs> the Greg Tiss Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. Jeff Cameron Show is sponsored by the legendary team at Hamilton Home Loans. Great rates, cutting-edge technology, and transparent communication is the recipe for a five-star mortgage experience at fsuhomeloans.com. Probable. It's time for how you say with the pitching uh, probables. Bunch of day games today, by the way. Arizona and the Reds are in the seventh inning. That is Zach Davies and Tyler Mahal. That game is three to one Reds. Cardinals Rays. They're in the eighth. Pitchers duel two to one. Tampa Bay leading the Cardinals. That's Miles Mikolas. Yes. Shane McClanahan. McClanahan. We got Dodgers, White Sox, nothing, nothing, second inning. Tyler Anderson and Dylan Cease. Phillies in Milwaukee are tied at one. That game is in the second inning. That is Zach Eflin and Corbin Burns. Rockies, Giants, Austin Gomber, Logan Webb, Nats, Marlins. Steven Strasburg makes his debut for the year. I got about you, Steven. Trevor Rogers going for the Marlins. We got the uh, A's and the Guardians, James Kapilian and Connor Pinkett. Pirates Braves. Oh, this is the series I'm going to this weekend. It doesn't bode well for the Buccos. Uh, Braves are starting to get a little bit revved up now. JT Brubaker, who's yet to win a game this year, is pitching for the Buccos tonight against the Braves. Max Freed goes for the uh, Bravos. Going to take the Braves in that one. What time is the game on Saturday for your birthday? Four o'clock. Perfect. As I long know. as there's no weather issues, you go back to the battery and catch game six. You're damn right. I'm excited about it. I've not been to uh, Truist, so this will be uh, a new. I've been to every other Braves park, so here we go. Use some sunblock. You're going to get roasted in the first hour, hour and a half. Yeah. But you're going to love the park. It's wonderful. Good times. Yankees, Twins, Garrett Cole, and Dylan Bundy. You know, we're going uh, tubing. We're going tubing tomorrow. Oh. Kind of big river up there in Atlanta. Shooting the hooch? I don't know what we're, we're – It's Probably bro- Chattahoochee. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I didn't yeah. ask my brother, but he's like, hey, we're going tubing. It's right there in Binings, which is right next to where the stadium is. So. Could be fun. Uh, what did I tell you? Oh, yeah. Orioles, Royals. Jordan Lyles and Chris Bubik. 
Fun name to say. Red Sox Angels, Nick Pavetta and Shohei Atani. And that is a look at those that shall reside at the moment. Yeah, I have uh you've t- you you've spoken glowingly of Truist and you hate the Braves, so that tells me yeah. a lot about how much you like that part. Oddly enough, well, this is why I like Turner, the setup of it. Now I understand that the idea that they want to have commerce lined up next to the stadium, and that's what all modern stadiums mm-hmm. try to do, except in Queens where it's just danger and chop shops, and then there's a stadium in the middle of it. (laughs) But I like Turner enough. I thought, why are you moving? And then once I got to Truist, I said, that's why. I see. It's just the ballpark itself is much more intimate. It's really nice. Yeah, I always thought that uh, Turner was sterile. I I, I didn't think it was much of a park. I didn't like it. Uh, People liked it. I was like, "Eh, there's nothing to it. There's just nothing. I didn't have any intimacy of which you speak. Was, I just like the fairness of the way the ballpark played. Now I thought, that I agree with. Yeah, it was. That I agree with. Does that this play sh- long? Does this play big or, or small? Uh, small to right field, and then I, I see it's been a minute since I've seen, the pandemic happened, but uh, the, obviously in the summer the ball is going to fly out everywhere. That's true. But to right field, I mean, what are we doing? Freddie Freeman. Uh, they they built a park around him, which was smart. And he left. Ah, uh, but it paid off. Yeah, no, it they, worked. They, they cashed in the chips. Um, yeah, kind of interesting because um, I, I, it's funny. I, I would go back to Fulton County Stadium. I remember going to games there way back when, and um, the Braves just steady building new stadiums. And I'm like, okay, well. By the way, there's a number out there: Lightning Rangers under five and a half. What do you say? Um. My gut instinct would say that's probably going to be the number three another, to one. Three another to two. another low scoring. Yeah, because both goalies are really feeling it right now. Yeah, both goalies. So it's hard to bet against that. Now I, it can get squirrely in game six or game seven, because if the team that's in danger of being eliminated is losing, they'll leave their goalie out for two or three goals before. So you never want to play a total unless you're playing the over in a true elimination game. I'd like to play play at minus one forty. Uh, Lightning Rangers first period under a goal and a half. Mm. We'll go with a little one nothing at the end of the first. Maybe I got a feeling Tampa's going to have to um, deal with at least one kind of shaky call and maybe two in the first period. Usually, the home team in a game like this gets an early power play. We're like, oh really? Okay, all right. I see how it is. That's how we're doing it. And it goes both ways. It yeah, happens yeah, both yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah. So I'd be okay. leery of that. So cash. you don't like it. You don't like it. I don't know, man. I think the Rangers are finding it very hard to score right well, now. Well, what's Tampa's team total? That's what I'd look at. If they're smart, they do it at three and a half. But if it's two and a half, I'd play that over. Oh, I'll play that over. Also, I'd like uh, for Friday's basketball game, Marcus Smart over three and a half rebounds. Oh, all right. Just so you know. Making sure you get that out there. We're having fun today, man. We're having a little fun. A little loosey-goosey edition because, uh, you know, we're leaving town and all that good stuff. So what are you going to do? Three and a half. You ready for a birthday weekend? Not really. Oh. Not really. Well, I expected that answer to be different. I, you know, I don't celebrate birthdays the way that I did when I was young. <laughs> but you're going tubing and going to a baseball game. I'm not saying I'm not going to have a great time. I'm going to have a great time. I get to be with family. I get to see my brother. Uh, love my brother. It's going to be great spending time with him and see his family. Uh, my boys are coming with me. So this will be this will be a good time. Is he going to sing you the birthday song? I hope so. Right, I don't know. Go. I don't know so, but I but I hope so. Are you sad if people don't sing you the birthday song at some point? I actually joke around all the time about celebrating my birthday month, but I don't really care. I don't. I don't. I don't really expect it. I, I mean, I I like nice things. Happy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I, I mean I like nice things, but I I don't need. I don't need to be sung to. Uh, good work out of you. There good work, Director uh, Matthew. The Gene Deckerhoff cameo I bought for you. Sorry. Now that would be awesome. Hey there. I could call him and ask him to sing. Gino, will you sing to me, buddy? Of course. I'm recording it. Peace, everybody.